Then who'd ever see the ghost? I have. What? Do you mean to tell us you've really seen a ghost? I do. I wasn't alone. Phyllis saw it too. Where did it happen, dear? Do tell us. You better ask John about that. Oh, I'm afraid I'm not much of a hand at storytelling. Why don't you ask George? He knows all about it. You tell us then. Where did this remarkable experience occur? Well, come on, my good chap. Out of it. Which house was it? This one. <laughs> Hi everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Paratalk, but a Halloween episode of Paratalk. Um, I'm joined by my good friend Tom, one and only Hello. shrouded hand. Hello, Tom. Hello, <laughs> All right. Uh, so what we're going to do um, is it's Halloween, uh, Halloween night. Actually, you're quite actually you're quite uh, everyone's quite quite. Uh, this is all happening at, at at the spur of the moment, really. Because with you know, I said to Tom, let's get together, let's do a Halloween, something Halloween-ish, something a bit scary. But what are we gonna do? And I thought, hmm, let's give it a think. Let's listen to some spooky sounds. So before I go any further, um, I would advise any of you out there who have got headphones, whack them on, because it will enhance the uh, the creepiness of uh, this episode. I don't know how much it will re- enhance it, but it hopefully it will enhance it a little bit. So anyway, uh, without further ado, Tom, how are you? I'm great, yes. Very good. I'm very happy. It's Halloween, my favourite time of year. So, yeah, it's all good. This is kind of right up your uh, right up your alley, really. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, it's kind of the... It's, it's, the, it's the season of, of Shrouded Hand, isn't it, really? <laughs> yeah, I suppose so, yeah. <laughs> Just... Uh... Seasons of all the season of all things spooky. Yeah, yeah. What what do you what what do you like best about the the Halloween? What what what's your favourite part of it? I just think it's I just like how weird it is. Like I, I just think it's so strange that we've got all these traditions, and then there's this one that's just centred around things that are supposed to scare you, dead things corpses you know just all and all the sort of negative things in life somehow we've got like a weird tradition every year where we just sort of i don't know decorate our houses with skulls and random stuff and dress up as monsters it's just it's just such a weird thing and i guess that's what i like about it most so it's 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 quite busy uh over your side of uh your neck of the woods and uh over here not so much where Mm. i am uh, it's it's there's not much activity outside. I think it's got yeah. a lot to do with it actually just poured down in rain just now. Oh, uh, so, yeah. But I'm hearing I'm hearing a few kids now and again uh, yeah, outside, so it's, it's quite busy. Yeah, I mean I've I've put a few decorations up, and I I don't know whether it's just because the last couple of years we just haven't we've had like one or two trick or treaters a night. I, I don't know whether it was COVID or something like that keeping the kids inside, but it's this this year. I mean, I'm just sat here in my office listening, and my wife's answering the door. But we've had so many. I think it must be just a, you know they've they haven't been go, going out for the last couple of years, so they're all letting off steam or getting out of the system or something like that. I don't know, but it seems to be absolutely loads tonight. Did you uh, mm-hmm. did you do the old uh, trick or treating when you was uh, when you was a young un? Mm, I wasn't allowed. <laughs> my, <laughs> my, my parents have. My parents were pretty strict. They're, uh, you know, quite 
quite strict, quite Christian, and uh, they didn't approve of going around dressed as demons and things. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So I was going to say, um, yeah, I, I suppose, you know, Halloween, the kind of, you know, roots in paganism, you know, and that sort of... Mm. Uh, the uh, you know end of the end of the year beginning of a new you know into the yeah. into the uh, the as we uh, the long damp you know as we're gonna mm-hmm. you know we're going into that gloomy the clocks have gone back so it's now dark at four o'clock or half past four in the afternoon and it's it's pitch black yeah, yeah. Um, we're into that part of the year now you know so I I think I the think, veil becomes thin yeah but uh, mm-hmm. I think that um, I don't know this 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 part of the the season, okay. This part of the season that when it changes, you got you got your summer where you're all doing yeah. your great stuff and it's warm and stuff. But there's mm-hmm. something about this part of the year where everything sort of suddenly changes and it mm-hmm. gets dark early and it gets starts to get colder and it's a it's a little bit wetter yeah. and the, and and the mornings are a little bit more misty. Don't you think it's uh it brings on it's a it's a different thing, isn't it? A different feel. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh... Um, I mean, I love it because I, I probably told you this before. I absolutely hate the, the warm weather. Yeah. So as <laughs> soon as soon as I step outside, you can just feel like like crispness in the air. Suddenly, it just it also you just I don't know. It's not even a temperature thing. It's just it's almost like you just feel it somehow. I'm not sure how to describe it, but as soon as I feel that sort of autumnal feeling, yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's just a a, a shift in in the mood and just. The way everything looks outside, so all the leaves start coming down. It's yeah, I love this time of year. So, uh, what's your favourite Halloween film or films? Oh my god, I don't know. <laughs> um, oh no, you put me on the spot. I don't. I can't. I, yeah, I. I don't know what I watch. On Halloween, really, I, I watch a different horror movie every year. I don't have, I don't have like one that I go go back to. Well, I have to say that yeah. I did watch uh, last night. I watched. I actually did watch um, Halloween, the yeah. the original, the first, you know, the first oh, yeah. one, yeah, um, yeah. the the, you know, the birth of Michael Myers or whatever. But yeah. um, the you know the original one from the eighties and with Donald Pleasance in it, and um, mm-hmm. wow, well, it's not it's not aged too well. It's not, really? and there's uh, oh, there's some people out me. there that uh, was going to disagree with me. Uh, this uh, I have to say that the jump scares in it are still as good today as they were back then. They still got me. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's been a it's while. Got a good like misdirection in that film, isn't yeah. it? It gets you looking in one place, and then he suddenly pops out of somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. I I have to say that um, uh, I couldn't remember. It's been a while since I've watched you know those films and i was a great fan mm. of halloween um you know all the john carpenter stuff i loved all that stuff and i still do and but yeah. it was just i was not i couldn't remember where the jump scares were and they did get me <laughs> so yeah uh, that okay. was a good one but uh, maybe, maybe i'll watch that i don't have it i honestly I, I feel like i should have a a movie that i go to every halloween but i i just i usually just have a look through and oh, i haven't watched this one for ages i'll watch this but um yeah, I don't. I don't really know. Um, maybe something like uh, cabin. Is it cabin in the woods? Cabin the in the all, woods. Like, yeah, the, the like references to other horror films and things like that. It's, yeah, uh, there, there, there are some good. Um, there are some good mo- modern uh, horror films out there. Uh, yeah. Gareth, uh, late you know, friend Gareth. Um, he mm. he had some. He was always sending me horror films because he was quite a an aficionado on um, on horror. And uh, yeah. he knew a good film, and he would send me a film and go, "Hey, check it out." And nine times out of ten, it would be either incredibly scary or mm. uh, a, a mind-bending film. You'd watch it and think, "Wow, what did I just watch?" But yeah. you know, either way, it would be a good film. But I think that with horror uh, and stuff like that, I think everyone's got their own, you know, their own sort of thing that they like. Yeah, I'm trying to think what I like. I might go. I might try and find one to watch tonight. I'm trying to think what. I, maybe I, maybe I'm in the mood for like a a Japanese horror, something like. I haven't seen The Grudge, the original. Oh, it's Grudge. The, yeah, that's that is a yeah. That, I've seen that. That's yeah. one of my favorite. I, oh. I kind of feel like I might be in the mood for watching something. That's like comic. That. Um, see, the the thing is with The Grudge, um, 
it's a bit like um it's a bit like the ring mm. it's 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 very um uh it 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 messes with your mind you yeah. you watch it and you're thinking one thing and it and then it kind of leads you down a different path it's not um it's not just like blood and guts and stuff it's more it gets in your head it really yeah. it really yeah. gets in your head and i think that's where you know uh those kind of those kind of films that kind of genre of film uh, it 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 is different it stands out it's its own thing you know Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I I think well it's Halloween, you know. Watch what you want, but uh, for me, I, I tend to watch one or two sort of eighty slashers, and mm-hmm. um, uh, that does me for another year. Yeah, and then I said I just you know rinse and repeat and do it all over again. <laughs> but maybe maybe not the same films, maybe different films, but yeah. the same thing. You know, yeah. I mean, I've I've heard of a lot of people who have like the tradition traditions. Yeah. Every Halloween, they'll watch a certain movie or something like that. Or I don't, I don't think I do. No, do you, do you have just... like a? Um, I used to do this, and I haven't done this for a long time. But I used to have a like a group watch, a part, not so much a party, but more like a mm. bunch of mates would come round, and we would have mainly we do this. I I tell you when we used to do this. We used to do this in the in the in the days of. Uh, the videotape and uh, oh. you know of course the 80s because that's where I'm everyone knows that's where I'm I'm stuck uh, part of me is stuck there I never left it so you know back in the 80s you would get a video you get all piled down the video shop you, mm. you'd get your VHS and you wouldn't you know you'd only get the VHS by how good the cover looked because yeah that was how you judged the film it could be absolute rubbish but if it had a great cover then it was going to be a great film but you know, pay yeah. your money, get your back with your mates and your uh, and your coke and your pizza or your chips, and mm-hmm. uh, watch your film. And that was like uh, we used to do that on Halloween. And of course, then DVD come along and it it kind of lost its um, it lost its sparkle a little bit. Do you find that yeah. going to like Blockbuster? Do, do you? I remember. I remember the transition from. I know I'm going off on a tangent here, but I remember the the, the, the transition, right, from video store to mm-hmm. uh to to digital you know, D V D store. Yeah. The, the Blockbuster and other sh- other shops, they kind of transitioned. One day mm-hmm. I was in there on a Friday and it was VH all VHSs. And I remember uh, it was a couple of weeks later that I went into the same shop. And there were no VHSs. Mm. It was all DVDs. And I, I was just... Well, they had some VHSs, actually. A small area. But majority was DVDs. And I thought, I suppose I better buy a DVD player. Yeah, I don't re- I don't remember... Because I feel like I was renting movies when it was on VHS. And then when it, when it was on DVD, I felt like you could just get DVDs for, like, cheaper than renting so you, you just could, go yeah. into it, you know, you'd be able to buy a DVD and they'd have all these, um, I can't remember what the shops were called, but there used to be shops and websites where you could get a DVD for like a pound 50p or something like yeah. that. And so I, I I ended up, that was about the time where I started properly like collecting horror films because you could get DVDs so cheap. But um, there was yeah, uh, there was a club, wasn't there, you could join. I was a member of it. Do you remember that oh, the mail order one that you pay? Oh, is that the one where you, you sign up and they keep sending you DVDs and <laughs> yeah. you've got to pay for them? Yeah, you had to, and then you, you had can't to li- get out of it once you've right. quit. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's how they got me. Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember a CD one. Uh, I was going out with a girl who was signed up for some CD, which you'd get sent a, 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 an album every month or something, and she was like, "I don't want this," but <laughs> she couldn't yep. get out of it. No, <laughs> um, the the problem was with that. I signed up because I saw. Um, it was Predator, I think it was on VHS, and I thought mm. I won that. And um, it was like, as you say, it was like fifty pence or something. But you paid for, you paid for the, uh, you know, the, the 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 postage. And I thought, oh, yeah. it's only like one ninety nine postage. Yeah, I'm up for that. Of course, there's mm-hmm. like, you know, young twenty year old or whatever I was, me, and I'm like, I'll have that. I'll sign my name away on the dotted line. And uh, off it went with my postal order because it was all postal orders back then with my 99 mm. pence and off it went. And uh, I think it was about 14 days later 
big bo- big square box drops through the letterbox and it's my predator predator vhs and i'm like yes i've got it mm. um and it had a little magazine with it and then in the magazine it said uh, all you have to do is choose one full price uh vhs per month and the full full price ones were like 14.99 well i think it was about 11.99 to 14.99 and uh you saw you had to do once a month but honestly there was nothing in there i wanted i'm like i don't want any of this so what i was doing was i was going around to all my mates saying do you do you want to buy any of these films (laughs) because i was built trying to build up my credits to get these cheap you know so i could get another cheap film because every other once you bought an expensive one you could then qualify to buy another one at a you know a, a lesser rate but yeah i i um i found it i i found it difficult to get out of that and i wrote them a letter saying oh um you know i'm uh, uh there's nothing in there's nothing in here i want and they're like well you know you did sign up for it so you know that's the way it goes boy you know and uh yeah mm. i was stuck in it for 12 months and i bought a load of films that i didn't really want and i ended up taking them all down the uh uh, in, in those days, you could take them to like um, the, the you know the, the high, local hi-fi shop, which would buy and sell videotapes. And he, he literally gave me, I think it was a pack of, of fifty pence per videotape. So mm-hmm. you know, I, w- I walked away with like twenty quid, and and I'd actually spent an absolute shed load of money on these yeah. videotapes. But there you go, you live and learn. Yep. But anyway, nowadays you just get them on demand whenever you want. I feel like, oh yeah, you just the whole experience of going out and finding a movie to watch is just yeah, that's all gone, hasn't gone it? now, isn't that it? That's all gone, Tom. Mm. That's all gone. Um, yeah. I, I know I'm being a bit uh, nostalgic, and uh, we're meant to be frightening people. That will cut. Trust me, <laughs> that will come soon. Uh, but um, no, I'm. Um, I I do find I do miss that. I do miss. Yeah. I mean. I grew up, I grew up in this town, and a lot of the buildings I remember of, of being something completely different. And all of the video shops, I think one of the video shops is now like an estate agent. Uh, another uh-huh. one is like a dentist, um, and they all have different. You know, ones a, I think one's a mobility center, and they all have different yeah. purposes now. But I remember them as like, oh, that's the that's where we got that film from, or you know. I mean, I'm a, maybe I'm a bit yeah. sad. Maybe I'm a bit too stuck uh, in the past. I, hey. I've got my my memories of video shops is being too young to rent the films myself, and my parents, as I say, were quite yeah. strict and they wouldn't let me watch any horror films. But I, for some reason, had this obsession that I wanted to watch them, and so I remember quite vividly the covers from the tapes because I would like sneak into the horror section when my dad wasn't looking and look at all the cassette covers. And try and imagine what was going on in these horror films, and <laughs> like, and I'd build up all these like stories in my head of what these the plots for these horror films, and like years later, I'd finally get to watch them, and there was like nothing like I imagined, but I really remember the some of the pictures on those those horror horror what movie. Was the, uh, we had one right, we had one video shop. It was called uh, West Coast Video, and it was down the road from where I am now, and. Um, it was above a, I think it was above a shop, and it was like on an upper level, and there it shared. It was it was a uh, two businesses, it was a video store and a hairdresser's, mm. and it you had this um, blend of uh, cigarettes and hairspray because <laughs> you could smoke in the video shops in those days. You could go in and yeah. smoke, and the guy that was it was basically one room, and it from from ceiling. To, to the to the floorboards was packed with videotapes he, he had everything from well you name it from the evil dead mad max everything and he had everything and uh, he had all the slashes he had all the slashes he had them all mm-hmm. and i remember the guy was maybe uh he was the kind of guy right he had these huge bags under his eyes they were massive um and he 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 was the kind of guy that most probably just spent his whole life just watching films because there was nothing he didn't know about any of the films in that shop. Uh, we would say, what's this one like? And you go ask about a 7 out of 10, mate. Yeah, it's, this, uh, it's a good, good plot twist. And I'm like, it's nothing he doesn't know. He's watched all these films. And mm-hmm. he had one of the main things in his shop was he had a CB in his shop. 
So mm. as you're in the shop, he had a big, like, two portable TVs. You know, those small portable sharp TVs. He had two 14-inch TVs up on the ceiling uh, pointing downwards. And they were going through, like, a, a hi-fi system. So he had like, his Jamo speakers. Remember the Jamo speakers? He had those uh-huh. uh, up in the corners. And he had the sound going through that. Uh, and the music and all that and be playing. So you had all these trailers playing. And then in the background, you had the sort of the crackle of the CB with people going like, one four for a copy, you know, Big John, are you online? You know, that sort of stuff. Uh, and and he would be chatting as well whilst he's smoking a cigarette. And there was an ashtra- a massive ashtray on the desk where you pay for your uh, doing your rentals. And it was full of cigarette butts. It was like a pile of ash. Where because you know other people would use it as well, uh, and he had and he had like um he had like a little these coffee cups. He had this like coffee machine where he was just ah uh, the guy was just like he that was his life, that was his yeah. life, and sounds, and then it, it kind like of a good life to me. Yeah, but that was his life. That he mm-hmm. he he obviously loved his job, and it, it was his right. business. He obviously and it was open from n- like nine o'clock in the morning until like midnight. It, it, he was literally open or i don't know i don't remember a time when he was closed um when we was in town we go oh, let's go get a video we go to the west coast because it was always open and it was like the guy it was the same guy i don't even know if he ever had a holiday but he was proper dedicated to what he was doing i mean that was his front room that was literally his front room yeah he had it all coffee cb tv what do you, what more mm-hmm. do you need you mm-hmm. know so anyway <laughs> But um, I was going to ask you, what was the first horror film you ever watched? Oh, I've... It's either, and I can't remember exactly which order I watched these in. Yeah. It's either Children of the Corn or um, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Because I remember um, being at like a, a sleepover and both those films were on. And actually, I'm pretty... No, I, it was it was Bram Stoker's Dracula. Yeah, yeah, I remember that now because I, I watched it like because I, 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 I'd been as I say I hadn't been allowed to watch horror films. Yeah, growing up, you know, and I'd built myself up thinking these films were going to be absolutely terrifying. So I watched Bram Stoker's Dracula like covering my eyes, thinking it was going to be like so disturbing. And I remember getting to the end of the film, I thinking, oh, it wasn't that wasn't so bad. So what was the what was the film that uh um like really scared you? The first film that you watched and thought, Oh man, that's that's giving me nightmares. <laughs> I don't know, really. Um there's there's certain films that got under my skin. Uh the one that springs to mind immediately is misery. Oh just for the just for oh, that yeah. one scene, which you can probably picture, yeah, but, with the block of wood and the yeah, yeah. And the but also oh. the, the whole the the whole film has this real tension going through it, where yeah. you know, like when she goes out and he's like trying to get around and yeah, sort of look around the house. There's just the whole film really got under my skin watching. I don't even remember the first time I saw it, but I remember I remember feeling like really like a bit freaked out by that film. Yeah, but I most films I remember. So, because I remember, like, kids talking about horror films, like uh, talking about Chucky and yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street, and I would always thought, oh, God, these films must be absolutely horrifying. And most films, because I'd built myself up to them, when I finally got to watch them, I was a bit like, oh, it's not so bad. You know? Well... Not as, the, not as bad as I thought they were going to be. The first film I watched, mm. which was a horror film that actually gave yeah. me nightmares, was uh, Evil Dead. Yeah, I mean now you watch it, and it's quite funny, but when you're a younger kid and you watch that film, I mm-hmm. had I literally had nightmares uh, when I went home and I, I went to sleep, and I had nightmares and I woke up and that was you know, and there's a few sort of slasher films like that that I watched that were yeah. I, like, you know you shouldn't really be watching them to be honest because they're what I would call mature adult films you know like i spit on your grave and they would that was i mean we yeah. i grew up in the era of the video nasty and the the government banning films can you believe mm-hmm. that these films were banned 
Clockwork yeah. Orange, um, I think I Spit on Your Grave, a whole bunch of them. They were banned. They were uh-huh. they were they would seem to be too violent or too mind bending to for people to watch, even people who were over eighteen. And and I mean they're not now. You can you can see them now, but back then it there was this hu- huge movement of people to have these films uh, taken off the shelves and and there were i knew of places right where uh if you knew someone who knew someone who knew a bloke who had this who had a membership could get you a copy and it would be <laughs> yeah. like a 10th generation screener so it's you might as well just put on white noise on the screen and you kind of make something out it was that bad mm-hmm. or the uh the the lip sync was so bad that it was all out of sync you know it was all so so, and people were actually going into the cinema and recording stuff with the video cameras under their <laughs> yeah. coat. And it was just so badly, it was just all over the shop. I mean, we got to the era of, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, Uncle Clive and his uh, Granada estate, and he would get two bins out full of videotapes, uh, and he would photocopy all of the, you know, all of the covers, and he would just record them with an with an Amstrad double deck thing, this is before the advent of well, you could have a DMAC uh, um, uh, m- m- macrovision uh, thing to stop it from pulsating, but that's another story. But the thing is, it's like that was the era of the of the entrepreneur, the video tape entrepreneur <laughs> who would come round once a Friday and everything was fifty pence for the whole weekend, and all he's yeah. doing is he's he's making his beer money for the weekend and it's beer and curry money that's it that's what you're paying for but you know it's cheaper than going to the video shop and he doesn't really care when you give it him back as long as yeah you, I, I you don't a few a few like dodgy dvds when they, they started coming into fashion there was there yes. was always a guy, there yes. was always a guy who'd come around the pub with like a bag full of dodgy dvds <laughs> and you'd get them sometimes and they'd be like um almost like the the film before they added the effects in so you'd get like a film sometimes and it'd be like some of the special effects weren't finished off it was almost like the the rough cut of the movie you'd end up getting it was really weird i'll tell you i'll tell you a little story now um back this was a few years ago uh gareth had a copy on vhs he knew someone that got a pre-release copy of the Blair Witch Project before it was mm. released to the cinemas. And yeah. he had a copy of that on VHS. And it was the copy that goes around to all of the studios where they watch it to make sure that everyone's happy with it before uh, they release it on general release. And he had mm. a copy of this on, on VHS tape. Uh, so it was it was the version you get before they do all the, you know, the finished bits yeah. to it to release it. But yeah, that was um, that was one of it in his collection. But um, but well, yeah, it's, that'd uh... be cool to have because I'm, I'm I I remember seeing like a documentary about the Blair Witch, and before they released it, they changed some of the sound effects, and yeah. I thought it was a lot creepier. Like there was bits where you could hear like babies crying in the woods, and they they removed a lot of that. I don't know why, because it was really creepy. But in the um the the edit just before they released it to the cinema there was a lot of creepy sound effects in there that didn't well, make it that's in what he told reason. me he he was gonna i mean he um sadly gareth passed away but um he was gonna digitize it and uh and he said oh, i'm gonna digitize it so you'll be able to see it but the fact yeah. was it's um i think i think they do it to appeal to a, a wider audience and more of a mm. a bigger demographic because obviously money and profit but um yeah. i was gonna say found footage uh films uh oh. i think when i first watched there was a big phenomenon the, i mean the, the blair witch that that was the beginning really mm. of the found footage phenomenon and yeah. for what it, i don't know what it wasn't very much money in comparison to what films cost to make it wasn't very much money for him to make that and it was all sort of very done very sort of you know hands-on but the amount of money it made was crazy Oh yeah, yeah. Because people went crazy about it. Aye, and then a million found footage films came <laughs> yeah. out because they were so easy to make. <laughs> Paranormal Activity was it? Paranormal yeah. Activity? Oh, I mean, oh, I just like. I remember. I remember the big. There was a big thing about that, and 
my mates are that kind. You've got to go and see Paranormal Activity. It's a ghost one. It's fan footage. And we're all, like, talking about it like it's real. And I'm like, you know it's not real, yeah? Well, how do you know? <laughs> well, it's it's a film, yeah? It's meant to... Yeah, but it could be real, couldn't it? It could be like they, they're playing with you. Psychological <laughs> truff, isn't it? And I'm like, no, mm. it's not real. It's just like it's made to... And, it, and, of course, I went. And I'm, like, sitting through it thinking, all right, got to admit, there were some bits in it that were quite scary. And I'm in my head going, it's not real. It's, it's just made up. It's not real. This isn't actually real. Uh, but in my, it was like my other part of my brain was going, are you sure? Are you sure? So, yeah. Mm. But that yeah. was a massive phenomenon all in itself, wasn't it, really? That whole oh, found yeah. footage stuff. I'm, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the found footage genre, but it did get to a point where there was just they were just churning them out. And, yeah. And I am actually, I, I quite enjoyed the first Paranormal Activity. I quite I rate it quite highly, but there was, there was just a slew of, dodgy uh sequels to that film and just yeah uh, there was a lot of films that came out with like similar titles like i can't remember what like you know just paranormal something or something activity and it was all just sort of trying to cash in on the popularity of pa- paranormal activity well so yeah it got really oversaturated well that's uh unfortunate but uh, yeah, it's the you know it's only so many ideas in there. You can only you can only do that you can only do that thing so many times before it sort of gets a bit you know a bit samey. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. anyway, so um, we were going to talk about uh, having a little chat and catch it up and and uh, but w- the reason we're hi- here is because of uh, Halloween. Mm-hmm. Now, so as uh, as you and I know, but the listeners don't know. Uh, creepy sounds fascinate well they fascinate me and i'm sure they fascinate you and they fascinate me even more when there's sounds that uh, are in the forest or outside uh i mean you had your um you had you did a bit of um wild camping a few years ago now and and Mm. you had well you had a bit of a weird experience didn't you it was it was pretty strange yeah um there wasn't a lot sound wise, I don't think. It was more just like weird, you know, I was walking in my sleep and Yeah, that was, it was weird. Just, it was just odd. I, I remember hearing a, like a scream in the night, just a yeah. really loud scream, but I'm pretty sure that was a fox. If you've ever heard a fox scream and yeah. it sounds just like a, <laughs> a woman screaming really. So yeah, that... quite creepy when you hear it in the middle of the night and you're in the woods. But um I was quite, I was kind of prepared for that sound because I'd I'd heard that that was a see something you can hear in the woods. When it when it comes to <clears throat> when it comes to wild camping, mm-hmm. I do I do watch a lot of these wild camping videos um of people going out in the middle of nowhere on a hill uh, just themselves with a video camera, and they document what they're doing. And I, I kind of, am a little bit envious about what they, what they're doing because, I, I it takes a lot of bottle to do that. And some mm-hmm. people say, oh, you know, uh, you know, it don't, it's nothing. It's just a bit of dark. It's just, you know, it's. A, I think it's psychologically. Uh, once you are out there on your own and it's a bit dark, you can't see much, and you're in a you're outside, you're in the elements, and your mind is a little bit ticking over, thinking, "What was that? Did I, see, you know, what's that?" I think you've got to be, you've got to have a certain mindset uh, to do that, and, and I do mm-hmm. admire these people that go out there, um, you know, guys and girls. I mean, it's not just one type; everyone does it, but. Um, I do admire what they do, and I I, I did go uh, camping. I was quite a proponent of camping when I was younger, and I remember going camping with a, a group of friends, and we we did some a wild camping in a wood, a, a local wood, um, yeah. and it wasn't like a massive wood. I would say I don't know maybe four square miles, so not huge but not small, and we camped, and it the whole point of it was to have a um like a little party you thought ah oh, we're gonna go it's warm we're gonna have a mm-hmm. party um and just get a bit drunk and and we got in the tents but we had an experience where it was completely dark and we had back in those days we didn't have um like big these massive powerful flashlights like like you have today we had these little silly little 
ninety nine pence, you know, flashlights that light up what's in front of you, and that's it. And um, we had an experience where we were in the woods and we were in this clearing, and we could hear. It was about three o'clock in the morning, m- around that time, maybe two, maybe three o'clock. We'd been drinking and we'd all gone to bed, and somebody had got up to go to the toilet, and they said, "Hey, could you hear that?" And we could hear people walking around, like around us. And we were in a clearing and we're surrounded by woods. And we could hear people walking around, but we couldn't see anyone. And the scary thing was our flashlights weren't powerful enough to light up the trees. We could only light up the area that we were in. And for me, that that was quite scary. Can, was it footsteps or could uh, you hear voices? Or? We, we No. So we, we couldn't hear anyone talking. Uh, but we mm. could hear twigs breaking as if somebody mm. was walking over fallen branches or f- fallen, you know, foliage on the ground. Mm. Uh, because That's it was creepier. Yeah. <laughs> They're trying to keep silent. Mm. Uh, because mm. it was summertime, a lot of the ground was dry. So things was, yeah. you know, cracking and, and it, it was quite, it was quite scary. And, and I, I haven't, I didn't, I felt quite uncomfortable. And the, the, the thing was, that when we all said, ah, just forget about it, and we turned our uh, lights off and we all went in our tents and zipped our tents up, I was in a tent, I think I was in a tent on my own, or the or the tent I was sharing with the, with the with my mate. He was so drunk, he was out of it. He was just, like, snoring. And mm-hmm. I remember be- thinking to myself, all that's between me and what's out there is a bit of material. And yeah, that's it. yeah, that's what I had when I was camping. It's just like someone could just come up and, yeah, <laughs> just stamp on you or <laughs> just anything like stick a knife through the side of the tent. It's yep. just there's no protection, and yeah, I that was a constant fear of mine. Yep. Yeah, that that was that was all I could think of, and I slept for about since from about three o'clock in the morning, something like that, till I think I woke up maybe half five in the morning. And we, I got up and uh, yeah. I, I slept for about maybe forty-five minutes. Uh, I just, I kept every little sound that I he- heard. I just w- woke up. Yeah. So yeah. That's uh, it. that's that's creepy. The the footsteps though, because yeah. I think like most most creatures, most like wild animals, especially if they're nocturnal a silence when they're moving around yeah. you know foxes and things like that you you don't hear them padding about we were in a clearing and the tree line was maybe about 40 to 50 feet in front of us so mm. a reasonable distance away and we had these flashlights but these flashlights were only good enough for about 10 feet in front of us and when you yeah. put them upwards and pointed them forwards they didn't illuminate really anything and we could hear well, what sounded like something moving around in front of us in the mm. in the tree line, uh, maybe maybe five to ten feet back in the tree line, but it wasn't just in front of us. It was behind us. It was to the left of us. It was to the right of us. So unless it was a group of people circling us, or mm. um, it was just like one person just walking around in circles, because that it couldn't have been just one person because it was it we heard sounds from behind us and in front of us at the same time. Um, so, yeah. And it doesn't help when you've got mates going, you know that you used to do devil worshipping up here, didn't you? And we're like, Shh, what are you all about? Why are you saying that? You know, uh, so, yeah. Yeah. I, w- I watched a video of someone wild camping, and this wasn't like a horror channel or anything like that. It was yeah. just a guy who went out and did a, like a wild camp, and he set up a, a little trail cam by his tent. And about three in the morning it captures like a single image and it's just a man stood next to his tent and i watched that i was like oh my god and it was it was like in the middle of nowhere he wasn't like somewhere where someone would be happening to walk past you know oh, like yeah. a, a night out or something it was just what was this person doing in the woods yeah and nothing none of his stuff seemed to be in touch or anything it was just oh, like I... someone stood next to his tent in the night that is creepy that, that you just out. said that because i watched a video last night of a guy doing a wild camp on a hilltop with a stream and w- in woodland and he's it's just him and he's 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 got this kind of hammock thing so he's not actually in a tent he's in this kind of like hammock with a tarp yeah. over the top 
and he's yeah, sat in it and he's filming. He's got a little dog next to him and he's filming and you hear someone whistling in the in the undergrowth and he's like, he turns around and he goes, hello? And he <sighs> looks back and he carries on talking to the camera and then you can hear like twigs um, breaking. And earlier on, what he did is he walked down the trail a little bit to an opening and he put up a trail cam uh, just yeah. to, you know, just to for it, put it up there. And in the morning, he goes to sleep and thinks no more of it. And he gets up in the morning and he walks down to the thing to get the trail cam and he picks it up. And then when he comes back and reviews the footage, at around the same time in the morning, there's a guy walking up and around the trail with a like a smock thing on. And then he crouches down in the middle of the trail, completely unaware that he's being filmed. And he's kind of like prone in the trail, just like looking around, like just 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 prone there, looking around. And it's like, whoa, what's he doing there in the forest at three o'clock in the morning or whatever it is? What's he doing there? Yeah. Oh, God. You know, how creepy yeah. is that? You're, you're in a tarp asleep and then there's some well, potential murderer walking around the forest mm -hmm. yeah. oh no me i just no i'm 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 at home with the door <laughs> locked in bed mate <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i mean uh, if, if you if unless they've got night vision unless you and if, if you're in darkness then yeah probably they wouldn't see you but it's just the idea that someone's out there in night just like what are they doing in the woods what are they doing in uh, the woods what are they do why are they walking yeah through? That's yeah. just, oh, well, this guy was filming and he had a, a head torch on, but it was like red. And I was thinking to myself, turn your, turn your light out, yeah, turn your light no, out, yeah, you, you know? Because if it's, if it's pitch black and there's a, just a single point of light, yeah. you, you, you just see it from miles around. Yeah. That oh. was what, when I was camping, I was so paranoid about putting my light on, but then I'd hear a noise and I'd be like, I've got to put the light on to see. And then I was just so, every time the light went on, I was just so aware that, anyone in the vicinity would be able to see me so what mo yeah. tom what motivated you to do that because that sit to me that was that felt like a spur of the moment thing you just think i need to do this yeah i don't know yeah my, i think it was i found this tent randomly and then uh my wife was going on a trip down to down that way i was i just looked on the map i was like oh I'll go camp in these woods. So it wasn't. So, it, it was. It was just honestly just spare the moment. But um, did you know the area? No, no. I just. I, I think I looked up. Uh, it was a uh, Delamere Forest. So I'd, I think I'd, I'd. I'd heard. I'd. I'd seen some videos about like. Um, and like apparently there was some murder in the, in that forest. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And um, I'd heard a few stories about like ghosts and things in there. But I didn't know the area. It was just my wife happened to be on like a business trip down there for some meeting. And I was like, oh, I'll just tag along with you because she was staying in a hotel. I was like, I'll go camp in these woods. Uh, wow. Did you have a Could you phone her if there was a problem? Like, come and get me. I'm yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I had a phone. Uh, it, wasn't too, it wasn't too bad. No, she was a, like a couple of miles hike away from where I was, but... I think the yeah. thing is, when you're somewhere like that and your mind starts going, it's very difficult to sort of, uh, you know, you hear something or, or your your brain starts going and you think, oh, no, 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 it could be this or yeah. it could be that. Am I being followed? Yeah, I'm being followed. There's something out there. Oh, it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a dragon. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a dragon. And, uh, and noise, noises at night are so amplified because I remember thinking there must be something outside a tent, like big, like a, some kind of mammal or something. And... It was driving me mad, this sound. And eventually I found out it was like a daddy long legs <laughs> had like gone into like the, the bit at the top of the tent where there's like a, there's like a vent. And yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Cover over it. And this daddy long legs had got into there and it was just the noise of its legs moving around. But it oh. was so, it seemed so loud in the night. I thought something was like scratching against the tent, but it was just, just the legs of a daddy long legs amplified. God. I don't know. Mm. Anyway, let's uh, let's play some creepy sounds. Now we've got okay. our, hopefully we've got ourselves uh, creep tape. So what we're going to do is we're I've been on the I've been on the YouTube and I've looked for some videos and and uh, I found some audio and we're gonna we're gonna play a few few clips and uh, we're gonna discuss them. So the first one is um, 
basically it's a guy in his house and um apparently he's all on his own but or is he that's the thing so or is he so let's have a listen and and then we'll discuss in in a moment i'm home alone and i'm hearing somebody screaming in my house Yo, what the f*** is that? Sounds like it's coming from back over here, but there's nobody that lives back there. There's nothing but woods back there. Well, <laughs> freaky. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I would have gone back upstairs. Yeah, I couldn't tell. Like it was, but is it? It's, it's almost like children screaming. Isn't yeah, it, it sounded or, like or it, it sounded sound like, like kids screaming. Yeah. So the so to give to give some context to the listener, the guy's walking around his the the lower part of his house through the kitchen area, and the hallway, and he can hear what sounds like children screaming uh either outside of his house or somewhere around his house in the dead of night that's mm. that's i mean all right it could be uh, what i did think it was maybe an animal an injured animal or I, s- I, something like that that's the problem with a lot of these noises is I don't know every animal noise, so sometimes when I hear things like that, I do think, could it be a could it be a creature that I just don't know about? But it sounded so much like a. It didn't sound like a fox. Like I say, I've I've heard a fox before. That sounded like children. Yeah, and so, if it was if it, it, it was it at night, it was recorded. I couldn't tell yeah. if it. Yeah. Yeah. If it was a daytime, I might say, oh, it's, it could be kids playing because when kids are playing, it sounds. Uh, it can sound like they're just screaming and killing each other, but middle of the night, that's that's wrong. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. that's uh, that's um, a bit creepy. But anyway, that puts, I want to put some context to the next clip. So okay. the next clip is a guy's outside of his house, and oh, across the road is a big wooded area. It's the dead of night, and he can hear some... It's, this is quite a long clip, but it's worth a listen. Um, you can hear some commotion, some some noise going on, and he's totally confused of what it is. He's not really heard this noise before, so we're going to give it a listen, and it's got an interesting ending to it. I've heard this one before, and it is a little bit, it is a little bit creepy. So let's have a listen to this one. January twenty first, about eleven p.m. Uh, I'm a couple hundred feet from my house. You can hear it going off in the background right now. Kind of sounds weird. Uh, kind of sounds doggish, hyena-ish. But you can hear it going off in the background right now. It's really kind of strange, just to say the least. Uh, it's been going off for about 15, 20 minutes so far um, by the fire station. And uh, it's pretty crazy, so if you can... Listen, that'd be crazy. Hold on. I mean, that almost sounds like laughter. It's actually gotten closer since it started. It's probably only 200 feet, 300 feet from me right now. I don't know what it is or what that is going off right there. You can hear it. I 
I mean, I've seen foxes and coyotes around here for a long time, and I'm not sure why if foxes and coyotes have been around here that long, why we wouldn't have heard them before. And all of a sudden, since November, things have been just going crazy around our community. Pretty sure my friend who's doing a documentary on Bigfoot will enjoy this footage. Gunshot. Something just shot over into the woods. There you go. Mm. <laughs> what was that? Was that was creepy. Was that creepy or a bit long? But what uh, happened there? I don't know. It was some of the, Sometimes it sounded like a human, and I thought, oh, that could just be, you know, a, a crackhead in the woods <laughs> laughing or something like that. But yeah. then other times it sounded so inhuman that I just, I just can't identify it. I mean, I wonder if there is some animal that makes that noise and he wasn't aware of it but well um you think you think if there was a creature like that you'd, you'd you'd have heard it just growing up in that area but the uh, i've thought oh, about freaky. i've thought about this clip um and i've thought about what it could possibly be and i'm mm. wondering if it could be a uh like a a trapped animal that's mm. you know that's basically um uh you know uh, trapped in a in a trap or something like that and then somebody had found it and found that it was badly injured and then basically uh, uh shot it to put it put it out of his it misery could be, but there was there was there was a quite a lot there was quite a few gunshots yeah. before that last one and the last shot it sounded like it sort of hit it and wounded it and it was screaming so uh, to me it sounded more like there was something out there in the woods making a weird noise and someone was just shooting in its general direction until they hit it but it <laughs> yeah the impression i got when whatever obviously it, it, a bullet hit it or some something hit it because you hear mm. heard the reaction yeah yeah but the first few shots yeah it, the first few shots rang out and I didn't hear any any reaction to it, and it was like that last one. It was suddenly, it was almost as if it screamed out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know what that was. That was, that was creepy. All right, so I'm we're going to jump over to another uh, a YouTuber called Novice Wild Camper, and he mm -hmm. I've watched this chap for a while, and he makes some uh, interesting videos. He goes out and he does his uh, his wild campings, and this this clip for um, for anyone listening. Uh, basically, he's in his tent and he's doing a, a piece to, to video uh, talking about his YouTube and what he's doing. Uh, he's in the middle of nowhere in his tent uh, and we're going to play it and give you a listen and then we'll we'll kind of discuss. So let's play it, play it a little bit back from when what happens happens. But let's uh, let's give it a play and give it a listen. So I swapped it out. Um 
hopefully this is recording because uh, I've made about three recordings now and halfway through it, it stops the film but carries on with the audio, which is a bit weird. I don't know what's going on with this camera, um, but uh, I don't think I'm going to be doing much more. It's about half past nine now, so I'm probably going to hit the sack shortly and uh, I'll catch you guys in the morning. Right, so I've I've heard deer, and I've heard foxes make some really weird noises at night. But I'm I don't know if you heard that. I'm not sure if the camera picked it up, but God knows what it is. It's quite a weird guttural sound. I'll try and boost it on the uh, on the edit. See if you can. See if you can hear it because that is really weird. Did you hear that? That's quite eerie. It does not sound like a deer. Definitely doesn't sound like a fox. Odd. Right, I'm gonna zip up and put my earplugs in, I think. Try and get some sleep and hopefully I'll still be here in the morning. Good night. Well, <laughs> I c would you be able to play that again? That second, that's the that noise. Yeah, we can play. Like it, I, 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 I feel like I missed it. I heard right. the first bit where it sounded like quite guttural, but then it sounded almost like a. I'll play the. Uh, I'll play the. Uh, the the whole clip again. Yeah, then sorry. I, 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 I felt like. All right, you ready? Yeah, I want to hear it again. All right, here we go. I've heard deer. And I've heard foxes. Make some really weird noises at night. I don't know if you heard that. I'm not sure if the camera picked it up, but God knows what it is. It's quite a weird guttural sound. I'll try and boost it on the uh, on the edit. See if you can. Oh, my belly's making that noise. See if you can hear it, because that is really weird. Did you hear that? That's quite eerie. It does not sound like a deer. Definitely doesn't sound like a fox. Mm. So, what do you yeah, think? It's that second that second noise. Yeah, it's just uh, I don't know what it is. Like the first noise where it was, he said it was kind of a guttural sort yeah. of groaning sound. I thought maybe oh that might just be a deer. Like, I don't know what deers, what all the noises that deers make, but I could imagine a a deer making some sort of sound like that. But that second noise was just. I don't know what that is. Just eerie. I can't get over how cool he is. How just laid back he is. Yeah, he's just he's just taking it. I wonder yeah. is there anyone in the comments who's managed to like identify it? Because uh, I I was actually out. Like I went to stay in like a cabin in the middle of nowhere up yeah. in Scotland, and I once I was out walking a dog at night and i heard a really weird noise, and I was like, I've never heard anything like that. It sounded a bit like a dog, but it wasn't a dog. And um, I recorded it and put it up, and people were able to identify. They said, "Oh, that's a munch, muntjac deer." Somebody in the comments says the guttural sound was definitely a large cat. I grew up oh, around okay. pumas and have heard numerous sounds they make. But I also worked in a zoo and have heard the noises lions, leopards, and tigers make. That was definitely mm. a large cat. The second what noise, is... however, wasn't a large cat or a deer or. A or a, or a canine 
Uh, I believe the second noise may have been one of those strange things. Oh, it's, there are strange things in this world. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Very strange. Very. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how you remain so cool. I'd have been. I'd have been saying. Um, but the problem is, when you're in that situation and you have that outside, your your brain goes into overdrive, doesn't it? I mean, what do you do in a situation like that, though? You, you, in the middle of nowhere yeah. and it's pitch black. Yeah. What, what do what you can do? you do? You either get out and just run out into the night, or you'd stay put in your tent and just hope it doesn't eat you. I don't know. Really, I really don't know. I think I've got another one here somewhere. Oh, yeah, uh, this is a good one. Uh, I think this is going to be the last one, but it's one that is a bit weird. This is a little bit, um, uh, how can I put it? This is a little bit, sort of got a little bit of Bigfoot thing going on because there's, there is a chap. Let me. I'm going to read the intro to what, um just got to look it up a minute. Uh, screaming, there it is. I'm going to read the intro to this video because uh, it's relevant to what you're going to hear so the chat this is posted on the 14th of june uh 2013 uh it's from um a youtube channel called project is it project dark uh project so a look uh project darkwood All right so in in the description that they write uh in june 23rd of 2013 due to a, a lethal combination of momental boredom uh, and small town syndrome, I left my camcorder in the woods to record the wildlife. After several hours in the dense jungles of suburbia, I checked my footage only to find some bizarre vocalizations on the audio capture. After ta talking to a neighbor, uh, Buddy, neighbor's Buddy, about an in the incident, I proceeded to leave the camera out again a few days later. Unfortunately, uh, said the neighbour, uh, said ne the neighbour's teenage son, who was present for the prior conversation, uh, he got the genius idea to mess with me by hiding out uh, of view and making caveman noises because of fun and joke. I, I however, have not ma been made aware of this until years later, long after the video was uploaded. I guess he didn't uh, plan on his brilliant prank helping the video with three and a half million views. So I just wanted to uh, play this one because this is something like we was talking about earlier, how you can uh, put something up and put it out there and how it can have a different effect. Because I'm going to play the audio now and we're going to hear something. And okay. if you did, if you didn't know the reasoning behind it, you would think maybe it's something else. So let's just quickly play it. Uh, let me just share it up. I got it. I got to add it. I'm going to play it, and then and then we're going to kind of kind of um, watch, get get the point across. Let's just listen. Have a listen a minute. Oh, that's weird.
So that was just the first segment. But the point mm-hmm. the point being is imagine now this was recorded in the daytime. But imagine you camping there in thick woodland in the dead of night and hearing yeah. that. I mean is that is that his is neighbor's teenage son making those noises? Because it says Right. It says I, the first he, the first time he captured some bizarre vocalizations yeah. on the camera. Yeah. And then after and then afterwards he talked to his So is this is this the recording of so, his neighbor's son making so these noises? It, yeah, it says unfortunately uh Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, so the neighbor's son, who was present for the prior conversation, got the genius idea to mess with me, mm. uh, hiding out of view and making the caveman noises yeah, uh, yeah. as a fun and joke. I have made. It, he wasn't aware of that at the time when he published this yeah. video. Um, there is another segment to this video where you hear something throwing stones or rocks and mm-hmm. walking around behind the camera, <clears throat> but. It's but very, once you know it's the one playing yeah, a prank. It, I just wanted to use this video yeah. as a, um, an example of not everything we see on YouTube is actually something unexplained. <laughs> yeah, as yeah. where we go to the video prior with that growling outside the tent, you know that's something weird. You don't know. You don't know what it is though. It could, uh, you say, yeah. it could be just like a moose or something. Not a moose, but like a deer or something. Yeah, but like I feel like this. I mean. Even though I, I maybe it's just because I know that it's, it's fake, but I feel like you can tell it's someone messing around. Whereas of all the other ones, like that one where it was like a laughter, I was yeah. listening to that and I was thinking it could just be some human laughing. But then there was times where it, it became like really inhuman sounding, and all of a sudden it, you think, well, it couldn't be a person making that noise. Whereas with this, and I, it would be freaky hearing that in the, in the night, but I think you'd, it's you'd be aware that it was a person. Yeah. I think, I don't know. I, I also, another thing I thought was he's really going for it. Like it's <laughs> for pulling a prank. He's really like, yeah, he's really, he's really uh, putting his heart into that. <laughs> That's a bit, it is a bit freaky in itself. How like, <laughs> like how over the top he's going with it. So, uh, <laughs> so what would be, um, what, what would be your thoughts on what, we're possibly uh what's going on in the woods what what could it be i mean is there uh, is it is it paranormal is it us just just using our are our senses going into overdrive because of our you know our fight or flight instinct what do you what do you think might be happening i don't know i, th- I think it's it it changes on uh it just changes depending on the situation, really. I think there's a lot of cases where people are just hearing an animal and just they think it's something else. But, um, I mean, I've heard so many weird stories about people seeing strange things in the woods, you know, like uh, Bigfoot-type creatures, wolf men, and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know. I, th- I feel like I feel like there's something magical about woods, yeah, like they've got a strange energy to them, and uh, the whole idea of you know the old idea of nature spirits and things like that is is an it's an idea that appeals to me because I, I feel like when you when you're in the woods you can feel a strange energy and uh, I feel like there must be there must be something I think strange the, in the woods. I think the woods uh, the the woods are very. Uh... I think you get that feeling in the woods because we go back to, you know, when we were evolving and mm. the, we would live in the woods, you know, that was our hunting grounds, you know, we would forage and you'd make a home there, you'd make an encampment. And I think that we yeah. are connected to the woods. And I think that when you go into the woods, you also, you you access parts of your senses that you don't normally access in your day-to-day life. So, for mm. example, when you go uh, when you go to the to work, and you you know you go down the town or whatever, and you get the bus or you you drive your car or whatever, you're only using certain senses that you need to get from A to B. But yeah. when you go into the woods and you um, you know you, you're you're in a place that 
has got limited vision, you don't know what's out there, uh, all those senses that you don't normally use come into play. And it makes you, it connects you more with the environment that you're in. Because the environment mm-hmm. that we live in is very, um, how can I put it? The environment that we live in is very, uh, it, 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 it's, it's very, it's, I'm not going to use the word fake, but it's very, um, it's not a natural environment. We're not naturally living in yeah. concrete yeah. brick houses. We're, our natural environment would be where we evolved from, living in the forest, making our homes in the, you know, that sort of thing. And then we came yeah. out and, you know, that that's what I mean. And, and that's why when you go back to the woods, and I get the same feeling when you go in a place like that and you you start to feel a connection with it. And when you hear these strange sounds, I think that your, I don't know, it, your brain sort of kicks into sort of fifth gear and you're sort of trying to figure out what it is. Yeah. I, th- I think we got so good. Un- got, I th- oh, God, sorry. I'm tripping over my words. I, I think we got to speaking about this a little bit on the last podcast we did. We ended up talking about like brutalist architecture oh, yeah. and stuff like that. But yeah, I think... Uh, I think that does play a large part in it. But honestly, I've heard so many stories about people who have seen strange things in the woods that yeah. almost like, like weird entities and things. And I just think like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it, it's always a case of just your senses going into overdrive, but how do people like, you know, they were walking through the woods and they'll see like a, some kind of spirit in there or it's just some weird unknown creature um and i just think well like how like like well, how do you account for things like that the woods are are naturally mysterious places i mean people go mm. vanishing they they vanish in woods people go missing uh yeah. there's been, i mean there's cases where people have uh been with groups of people and they've gone out at the front of the woods and they've gone around a corner and the friends have caught up with them and they're nowhere to be found yeah. I know, and uh, you think to yourself, well, you know, what's going on there? And then you've got, yeah. obviously, say, you've got people who have counted, encountered strange creatures in the woods. Look at the stories that come out of Canuck Chase. Uh, right. People that have seen the, the the wild men. They've seen these um, small fairy-like entities. They've had um, uh, a poltergeist phenomenon, uh, stones throwing. Yeah. One of the phenomena yeah. at Canuck Chase is uh, people having stones thrown at them. Not, not violently but thrown in the, their path you know the way they're walking and when they pick these stones up these stones are warm you know yeah and yeah. there's only two things that could be there it's someone else that has been in their pocket or they're and it's in a port they've it's it's come into being from somewhere else mm. yeah and I, I i i don't know if these sort of creatures that they see whether they're like you know, they physically exist, whether, you know, whether there's such a thing as like, I don't know, a, a, an elf or something or whether, but I feel like these forests, it's almost like the, it's almost like the forest itself is its own sort of, um, it's like it's one organism. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. rather than just being like individual trees, it's almost like it exists as its own, like it's an entity in itself and it's got a, a strange energy of its of its own and all the all the plant life and all the animals and everything in in this forest it's almost like it's got its own it's almost like a concentrated energy source mm-hmm. and somehow I, f- I feel like it's almost like the human mind interacts with that sometimes and you know you're walking through it and you'll see a, a weird creature it's almost like you're um I don't know. I don't know how to say it. It's almost like your your mind's just interacting with this massive energy source, which is just this all this life all around you. Yeah, there is a there is a strange um, feeling. I mean, mm. as I say, I mean, when I was younger, I used to go playing. I I lived in a on a, a caravan park for a couple of years, and there was a a wooded area behind us. And we used to go playing in that, mm. and um, it was always. Weird feeling, just a weird feeling in there. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. And all and all these forests used to cover like you know hundreds of miles, yeah. and they've just been cut down and cut down, and it's yeah. almost like all this energy has been sort of concentrated down into these little pockets. Yeah, there was a small sort of one or two mile area. 
Yeah, mm. yeah. Like Epping Forest, for example. Look at the stuff that goes on in Epping Forest. Some of the stuff yeah. that people have seen in there. They've had, uh, they've had, you know, people have seen apparitions. They've had uh, encounters with strange things in this Epping Forest. That's a forest that is, uh, it's old, 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 old forest, mm -hmm. and and it used to be much, much bigger than what it is now. Much bigger. Yeah. It was like you know, massive. Mm. I listened to I listened to some podcasts. I don't know what forest it was in, but he's, it was this guy saying that he, him and a, a friend went camping in the woods when they were kids, and they woke up and it was like this. It was it was like a tree man. It was like the size of like an oak tree, but it was a man, and it was you know he had he had bark for skin, but he was just sat there like just sat there on this on this mound by their tent. <laughs> it's just, it's just a weird story, and it's like it's, it's like his skin sparkled and all this. I can't remember all the details, but I've just heard so many weird stories of people seeing these strange creatures, and I just I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I I can't really describe exactly what I'm I'm trying to say, but it's like there's a an energy, and then your brain interacts with it, and it sort of manifests as these weird creatures that we see. But I don't know if they whether these things exist. But I, I do feel like people are seeing something. It's not just like their imagination. I feel like they they are actually experiencing something. But I, I just don't know what it is. It's it's something to do with like the energy in these places. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's like like the life of it sort of manifesting in some way. Well, I think <sighs> uh, we've come to the end of this episode, and it's a great way to end it on uh, on a cliffhanger <laughs> <laughs> because I'm sure that. Uh, we could do. We could talk. We could talk on this for hours. We could talk on haunted woods and enchanted forests for hours because there's always so yeah. much to talk about. And I think that what we need to do is we need to do another episode on uh, haunted forests or weird forests or something like that because there's so much to talk about when it comes to stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. Uh, so any final words, Tom, uh, on this on this Halloween episode? I hope everyone's oh, enjoyed it. But any final words? Um, I can't. I um, no. I I apologise if my my belly has started rumbling massively through the middle of this. So if there was any unexplained noises in the background, it might have been. It sounded a bit like that cat making the purring noise on that camping video. So, um, yeah. I, I yeah. Well, we'll have your dinner. You have your dinner. Have you had your dinner, Tom? I haven't had it yet. No. Well, get, get, fall in the burger. <laughs> <laughs> well anyway so um i hope everyone enjoyed it um it was uh it, it was um enjoyable and uh, yeah, and, uh I liked it. I, yeah it was it was enjoyable and i think that well, tom and i will get back together uh at some point soon in the near future and we'll do another episode on some weird woods or something like that because there's always something to talk about but uh, and and I, I hope everybody has a um has has had a uh, a nice halloween and and uh, you know a nice evening but uh well all i left to say is um until next time happy halloween and catch you on the next episode goodbye, goodbye.